All right, so get this. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about a trip to Sligo, Ireland. No. Nope. Right? Sounds good. And not just the usual poorest stuff. We want to like really get under the skin of the place. Yeah. So we've got a whole stack of sources here. Okay. A visitor's guide, mm -hmm. some articles that are actually debating how posh Sligo is. Interesting. Even some driving tips and a deep dive into Irish history. Really? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. So it's fascinating, isn't it? It is. So many layers to peel back. Yeah. So instead of just like telling you where Sligo is, let's yeah. kind of like set the scene. Okay. So imagine Ireland's northwest coast. Right. Rugged cliffs, the wild Atlantic smashing against the shore. Okay. I'm already <laughs> feeling the wind in my hair. Now picture a town nestled right between two mountains, Ben Bulbin and Nocneria. Okay. That's Sligo. Nocneria. Yeah. That name rings a bell. Uh huh. It's where that legendary warrior queen, Maeve, is buried, right? You've been doing your homework. A little bit. And it's not just any burial, you know? Right. It's this massive cairn on the very summit. Wow. The sources actually describe it as yeah. a visual reminder of her power, even in death. Oh, wow. She's a figure who embodies both the beauty and the fierceness of this landscape. Chills. <laughs> Ancient warrior queens. Yeah. Dramatic landscapes. Yeah. I can already tell this isn't your average vacation spot. Exactly. Oh, and yeah. the history goes even deeper than Queen Maeve. Really? We're talking Neolithic era here. Oh. One of the sources talks about the Caromore Megalithic Cemetery, uh -huh. which is right there in Sligo. It's right. one of the largest and oldest in all of Ireland. Wow. We're talking tombs that are over 5,000 years old. Wow. That's older than the pyramids. Right. So we've got ancient mystique. Uh -huh. We've got dramatic scenery. Mm-hmm. But then there's this whole debate about Sligo being posh. Right. Is it all fancy hotels and golf courses like some of these articles are saying? Well, the articles kind of paint a complex picture. One source mentioned a luxury hotel, the Glass House, uh. known for its sleek modern architecture. Oh, okay. And views overlooking the Garavogue River. Beautiful. And yes, it's true. There's the County Sligo Golf Club at Ross's Point. Oh, yeah. Which apparently attracts golfers from all over the world. Okay. But then other articles argue that this is just one side of the story. Okay, so what's the other side? Yeah. Because I'm getting a bit of FOMO here. Yeah. Thinking I might need a trust fund to even set foot in Sligo. You definitely don't. Okay, good. The sources also highlight a thriving arts scene. Okay. Traditional music pubs where you can hear real Irish folk music. Nice. And a kind of down-to-earth charm that you don't always find in those super polished tourist destinations. Right. You know? So, so. Right, that's a relief. So it's more than just a playground for the rich and famous. Exactly. Okay. Sligo has this fascinating blend of contrasts. Yeah. It's a place where you can sip locally brewed craft beer at a traditional pub, mm. then wander down the street and find yourself standing in front of a 5,000-year-old tomb. I love that. Right. Okay, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. I know he's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But for those of us who might not be total literature buffs, right. who is this W.B. Yeats character everyone keeps bringing up in relation to Sligo? Ah, you're in for a treat. Okay. Imagine one of the most celebrated poets of all time. All right. Deeply connected to the land, the myths, the very soul of Ireland. Wow. That's W.B. Yeats. Okay. And Sligo was his muse. So basically, Sligo is like a walking, talking Yeats poem. Pretty much. Okay, amazing. He spent his childhood summers there. Okay. Totally captivated by places like Ben Bulbin, uh -huh. Loch Gill. Yeah. This lake surrounded by woods. Beautiful. Faith and Lissadell House. Okay. This grand estate. Nice. All of which he wrote about in his poems. Wow. We can actually dive into some of those poems later if you like. Oh, I'm definitely down for that. But first, I'm thinking about all the adventure stuff you mentioned earlier. All right. What's Sligo got for those of us who want to get out there and explore? Oh, uh, buckle up. All right. Because Sligo is an outdoor enthusiast's dream. Cool. The source even mentions the Wild Atlantic Way, mm -hmm. this coastal driving route that goes right through Sligo. Okay. And they recommend taking it slow because the views are just that stunning. Okay. Sold. Hmm. What exactly are we driving past, though? Well, for starters, there are hiking trails up Ben Bulbin yeah. and Nocneria. Oh, right. And we're not just talking a stroll in the park. 
Right. These are challenging climbs. Okay. But the reward is incredible. Okay. You get these panoramic views of the Atlantic, the countryside. Bitter you can off. see for miles. I'm not sure I'm up for a mountain climb, but I do love a good beach day. Oh. Anything like that. Oh, absolutely. Strand Hill Beach is apparently legendary for its surfing. Wow. Consistent waves, beautiful scenery. Okay. Even if you're not a surfer, it's a great spot for walking, exploring, or just chilling by the water. Surfing in Ireland. I never thought of that. Yeah. And speaking of things I never thought of, mm -hmm. the guidebook mentions boxty. Oh. <laughs> what in the world is that? This is where the local cuisine gets really interesting. Oh. Boxty is a traditional potato pancake. Uh -huh. And apparently Sligo has its own unique take on it. Really? Some sources claim it originated in Sligo. Wow. And there are even festivals dedicated to it. Okay, I am officially intrigued. Yeah. So... We've got hiking, surfing, potato pancakes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Sligo has something for everyone. It really does. All right. And we haven't even scratched the surface of the cultural scene. Okay, bring it on. I'm ready to hear more about what Sligo has to offer. Oh. I'm picturing myself cruising along a wild Atlantic way, wind in my hair, maybe a box tea or two in the back seat. Mm -hmm. But before we get too carried away with our road trip fantasies, right. let's dive into some of the cultural gems you mentioned. Where should a culture vulture start in Sligo? Well, we've talked about ancient history. Yeah. So let's actually go back to that for a moment. Okay. One of the sources really emphasized the Caramore Megalithic Cemetery. Uh huh. Not just as an ancient site, right? But as a place where you can really feel the presence of the past. Okay. I'm intrigued. <laughs> it's one thing to read about five thousand year old tombs. Right. But to actually stand among them. Exactly. The source described walking through those passage tombs, dolmens, and stone circles. Wow. And feeling this sense of awe. Yeah. Like right. you're connecting with the people who lived and died on this land thousands of years ago. Right. It's not just history. It's a tangible experience. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. So, Carol Moore, for the ancient history buffs, mm -hmm. what about for those of us who are more into, say, medieval history? Sligo has you covered there, too. Okay. There's Sligo Abbey, huh. founded in the 13th century. Okay. It's a ruin now, but apparently the ruins are incredibly well-preserved. Ruins can be pretty cool. Yeah. You have to use your imagination to fill in the blanks. That's what's so great about Sligo Abbey. Yeah. One source described it as this hauntingly beautiful place where you can almost hear the echoes of the monks chanting. Wow. Picture them walking the cloisters. Yeah. You're literally walking in their footsteps. Amazing. And speaking of walking... Let's get back to those outdoor adventures. Mm. You mentioned some pretty epic hiking trails. Oh, yeah. Sligo is a hiker's paradise. All right. We've talked about Ben Bulben, that iconic flat-topped mountain. Yeah. The sources mention some pretty challenging trails. Okay. But the views from the top are apparently worth every step. Okay. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah. Stunning views. But for someone who's not exactly an experienced climber, is Ben Bulben doable? Well, it depends on your fitness level. Yeah. All right. But the sources also recommend a hike up Nocneria. Okay. You know, where Queen Maeve is said to be buried. Oh, right. <laughs> so I could potentially pay my respects to an ancient warrior queen Andy get a workout in. Two birds, one stone. Yeah, like... And even if you don't make it to the top... Yeah. The views from the lower slopes are still incredible. All right, I'm adding that to my list. Okay. But what about something a little closer to sea level? Okay. We were talking about Strand Hill Beach earlier, right? Strand Hill is a must. Oh. One source described it as this wild, windswept beach yeah. that's a magnet for surfers. Okay. Apparently, the waves are consistent, and there's a real surf culture there. Cool. They even have a surf festival every year. Okay. I'm officially adding surfing in Ireland to my bucket list. Nice. But what about for those of us who prefer our water a little calmer? Then you have to experience Lough Gill. Okay. Remember, this is the lake that inspired so much of Yeats' poetry. Right, the Lake Isle of Innisfree, all that. Exactly, and you can actually experience it for yourself. Yeah. The sources suggest renting a boat and just drifting across the lake. Right. Surrounded by wooded hills, maybe even reading some Yeats aloud. Okay, now that is a travel experience I can get behind. Super peaceful, super poetic. Mm-hmm. But what about when I want to get my heart rate up again? Well, we talked about the wild Atlantic way for driving. Right. But for the truly adventurous, there is the Sligo Camino. Wait, Camino like the Camino de Santiago in Spain? Exactly. It's a 40-kilometer pilgrimage route that follows ancient paths through Sligo's stunning landscapes. Wow. You can walk it over a few days, stay in cozy guest houses along the way. Okay. 
and really immerse yourself in the beauty and history of the region. Wow, I love that idea. A mini Camino. It's like combining spirituality adventure and Irish hospitality all in one. Yeah. All right, I need to know more about this. But first, what about the art scene? Okay. We were talking about Sligo being more than just posh. Right. What kind of art are we talking about here? Well, one of the sources highlighted the model, okay. which is this contemporary art center in the heart of Sligo. Okay. It's apparently home to cutting edge exhibitions, film screenings, uh -huh. and even a shop where you can buy work by local artists. Okay, that sounds right up my alley. I love discovering new artists. What about music? Okay. We keep mentioning traditional music, but is there anything else happening in Sligo? Sligo has a vibrant music scene. Okay. Aside from the traditional pubs, where you can find impromptu sessions pretty much any night of the week. Right. There's also the Hawkswell Theater. Okay. Which hosts everything from classical concerts to contemporary dance performances. Wow, so much to experience. Uh. But speaking of experiencing things, all this talk of hiking, surfing, and art appreciation is making me hungry. All right. Let's dig into those culinary delights. Right. We talked about Boxty. Yeah. But Sligo's food scene is so much more than that. Okay. You mentioned the Lissadell mussels earlier. Oh, yeah. They sounded incredible. They are. Right. One of the sources raved about how plump and delicious they are. Yeah. Often served with creamy garlic or white wine sauce. Okay. That's it. I'm booking my flight. Hold on. There's more? <laughs> we haven't even talked about the Sligo oysters. Oysters. I'm listening. Sligo Bay is famous for its oysters. Oh. The sources describe them as having this unique briny flavor uh -huh. that's specific to this region. All right, I'm officially drooling. But let's not forget about those traditional Irish dishes. Right. We can't go to Ireland without trying a hearty Irish stew, right? You absolutely can't. <laughs> and the pubs in Sligo are known for their stews. Nice. Imagine yourself cozying up by the fire after a day of exploring, yeah. a warm bowl of stew in your hands, and maybe some live music playing in the background. This is all sounding too good to be true. But you know what? What? I have a feeling you've got even more up your sleeve. Maybe. Are there any hidden gems in Sligo? Yeah. Places that aren't in the guidebooks. Sligo is full of surprises. Okay. One of the sources mentioned Glencar Waterfall. Ooh, a waterfall. Yeah. Tell me more. It's not just any waterfall. Really? It's this stunning cascade that's nestled in lush greenery, uh. a short drive from Sligo Town. Okay. The source described it as this magical place yeah. where you can feel the spray of the water on your face and really connect with the power of nature. Okay, I'm adding that to my must-see list. Uh. What about something a little more off the beaten path? Oh, okay. Like something that only the locals know about. Well, have you ever heard of Creevy Keel Court Tomb? can't say I have. It's a Neolithic burial monument. Okay. Even older than Caromore. Wow. It's a bit of a trek to get to, but apparently it's worth it. Okay. You're basically standing in this ancient chamber. Yeah. Surrounded by history with incredible views of the surrounding countryside. Wow. I'm starting to think I need to extend my trip to Sligo. Are there any other hidden gems you want to let us in on? Well, there's one more place that caught my eye. Okay. It's called Parks Castle. Parks Castle? Yeah. I don't think I've come across that one in my research. What's the story there? It's a beautifully restored 17th century plantation castle. Okay. And here's the best part. Yeah. It's perched right on the shores of Loft Gill. So you've got this incredible combination of history architecture and those breathtaking lake views we were talking about earlier. Okay. I am sold, Parks Castle. Yeah. It is. But let's be real, I'm going to need some help planning all of this. Right. What resources did you use to dig up all this info? Mm -hmm. Anything you recommend for aspiring Sligo travelers? Of course. The Sligo Tourism website is a great starting point. Okay. It's packed with information on everything from attractions and accommodations to events and festivals. Perfect. And for a more local perspective, I'd also recommend checking out the Sligo County Council website. Okay. They've got details on all the practical stuff like transportation services uh -huh. and even some suggested itineraries. Perfect. That gives me a great place to start. Oh. So we've covered history, nature, culture, adventure, food. Yeah. I feel like I've already been to Sligo. But I know there's always more to discover. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Um, anything you'd add for someone planning their own Sligo adventure? You know, as we've been exploring all these different facets of Sligo, what strikes me is the sense of discovery that permeates the place. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. like every corner you turn, there's something new to uncover. Mm -hmm. Something that surprises you, challenges your perceptions. Precisely. 
One of the sources even talked about how Sligo is a place that invites you to slow down, to really savor the experience, to connect with the land and its people on a deeper level. It's not about checking things off a list. Right. It's about immersing yourself in the atmosphere, letting the place work its magic on you. I love that. It's not just a vacation. It's a journey. Yeah. A journey into history, nature, culture, even into yourself. Exactly. And that journey can take many forms. It could be hiking to the top of Nocnaria and feeling that sense of awe as you gaze out at the vastness of the Atlantic. Yeah. It could be losing yourself in the rhythm of a traditional music session at a cozy pub, feeling the warmth of the community around you. <laughs> or it could be something as simple as wandering through the streets of Sligo Town, soaking up the atmosphere and striking up a conversation with a friendly local. You know, as you're talking, I'm realizing that Sligo isn't just a place. It's a feeling, mm -hmm. a feeling of connection, of belonging, of being present in the moment. I think you've hit the nail on the head. There's a sense of timelessness in Sligo, a feeling that you're part of something much bigger than yourself. And that's something you can't find in just any travel destination. Yes. Yeah. Something special, something unique to Sligo. Absolutely. We've talked about the contrasts, the ancient and the modern, the rugged and the refined. Right. But it's the way these elements come together, yeah. the way they weave themselves into the fabric of the place uh -huh. that creates this truly unforgettable experience. So for someone who's been bitten by the Sligo bug like myself after this deep dive, what would be your parting advice? Go with an open mind and an adventurous spirit. Be prepared to be surprised, to be challenged, to be charmed. Embrace the unexpected, savor the simple moments, and let Sligo reveal itself to you in its own time. And most importantly... Don't forget the box tea. Exactly. Yeah, Don't yeah. forget the box tea. Well, I think we've covered just about everything there is to cover on Sligo. From ancient legends to modern-day delights, we've explored it all. So to our listener who's dreaming of a trip to Sligo, we hope this deep dive has given you a taste of what awaits you. And who knows, maybe you'll discover something we didn't even mention. That's the beauty of travel, isn't it? Yeah. The unknown adventures, the unexpected connections, the stories you bring back with you, safe travels, and happy exploring.